Less than 20% of the inland area adults have a BA degree or higher, which is far below the percentages in LA, Orange, and San Diego counties, basically our competitors. Should Riverside focus its economic development on blue collar jobs to accommodate our current workforce, or jobs that require higher levels of skill and education to accommodate the demands of a 21st century workforce? This question to you, Ms. Martinez. I'm sorry, repeat that last part again. Should Riverside focus its economic development on blue collar jobs to accommodate our current workforce, or jobs that require higher levels of skill and education to accommodate the demands of the 21st century. I think there should be a good balance between the two. Um, of course, we want to satisfy the needs of our current um, residents. So blue collar jobs are in need right now. Definitely bring those up. But we also want to encourage kids. We also want to encourage the young people to achieve higher education. So, like I said, a little balance of the two would be my recommendation. Ms. Melendez. I have to agree with Ms. Martinez. We have four institutions of higher learning in this city with La Sierra University, California Baptist University, UCR, and of course, Riverside City College. Riverside City College hosts a tremendous field of career technical programs where you can learn to weld, where you can learn to repair our vehicles that are now mini computers where you can learn to be a nurse or a cosmetologist. There are so many wonderful things available at RCC. So you need to build your career tech workforce to um, employ the folks that we have here. And once that happens, that often means that that person had, who has just achieved that goal now wants to go on and achieve another goal, a higher goal, a bachelor's degree. So I think that's a good road to follow. And I do believe that we do need both. And I am happy that our UCR Medical School is on force and on, on uh, its way to success so that we will keep those positions in, that are so much needed in our area. Thank you. Ms. Marino. You know, I've been really involved in local politics for about six years, and this question keeps on coming up over and over and over again at City Hall, at debates, and we always say we want tech jobs. We want tech jobs. You think after 10 years, of people being in office, we would have a clear direction as to where jobs are going here. But let me tell you what they did, folks. They built warehousing. So that's what we have here. So I don't know how we're going to move from warehousing to tech jobs. Because I was in uh, Marina Del Rey not too long ago, and it's all tech. In fact, they told me that this is the new Silicon Valley of Southern California. It is not going to be Riverside. These people need to stop giving us lip service. We need to either do it or not. These people have had 10 or 11 years to do it, and nothing has been done. Thank you very much. Very good. Brad and I say in the last three years, we've created 10,000 jobs in Riverside, and just last year alone, 4,000 well, jobs. And that is, Come on. That has been reported in the paper. So if you don't oh, believe the economists, what the newspaper and, and others have provided in terms of statistics, then I don't know what you believe. But that is the truth. And we have 7,500 graduates a year from four-year institutions. We have an educated workforce here. What we need is to continue to, to attract jobs and employers at that level, right? And they will also, as they grow the economy, we will have jobs at, at, at other levels as well. So we're going to have blue and uh, white collar jobs in this city um, as, as long as I'm the mayor. And, and I, I agree, balance is very important. So a couple of things that I've done in the past to create jobs is to partner with Vocademy. It's a makerspace in Riverside to fill the issue that we have in the high schools that don't have vocational education and hands-on educational opportunities like auto shop and wood shop and metal shop. And so Gene Sherman, who went to the White House as a part of the makers movement, has seated himself to Riverside. We've supported him. We've had that first Maker's Fair, we're going to do another Maker's Fair with him to continue to build momentum around that portion of the economy. I've also created a task force for the Innovation District in Riverside, which is going to, to work at the, on, on the, as I mentioned, the tech hire uh, positions and jobs and encourage investment um, along the Innovation Corridor to, to tie in to the medical school and CARB, who just, who just named Riverside as their new home. 
All right, Councilman Davis, you seem to be chomping at the bit over there. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have not created 10,000 jobs in the city. That is a matter of fact. We don't even have the capacity to do so. Let me tell you something. I own a product of the welfare system, born and raised on behalf of the uh, Maricopa County taxpayers in the city and county of uh, Maricopa in Phoenix, Arizona. I do not have a degree of higher education until June 6th. I will graduate with a bachelor's degree in business management as well as a minor in economics. Because why? I need to be able to tell my kids, if I can do it at 44, you can do it at 18 and 20. Yes. That's a matter of fact. My kids are not going to college here because UCR is filled up. They're going to ASU and University of Washington. They tell me, Dad, I'm never coming back. There are no jobs here for us. Period. Yes. And that's a matter of fact. We have higher institutions. They produce a lot of children that are, and the adults that go out. But the fact of the matter is, they all leave. We have nothing here because all we want to do is go out and read, walk, and bike, and hike with the kids and not focus on business development and bringing the real jobs here. As your mayor, I have done it, I will do it, and I've done it as, just as a councilman. I've proven it. it can be done. It's just the know-how and get out there and do the business development and take it seriously. Let's tell you RCC has no classes available. They're full up. We as the government, as well as with private partnerships, have to create these facilities at no cost or low cost to teach the people in our city who are not going to go to college how to have a good job skill to support their families here in Riverside. Councilman Davis, you've been on the council for almost eight years. You have a vote. The mayor doesn't have a vote. I hear what you hear about college uh, graduates leaving this area. What has the council and you done to stop, stop the hemorrhage? Well, the hemorrhage is very easy to stop. Face it, folks. We have to do this as, as everyone is set up here. We have to do it together. The council cannot, we're powerless at this point in time. We have no redevelopment available. We have no budget. It's going to have to be a public private partnership. And that's a matter of fact. Our schools, you folks out here are business owners, teach these young men and women, and even those of age, how to do a job with the skills that you have and can provide. That's how we do it. It doesn't take the mayor's office to do it. It takes us all going forward to make Riverside the great place that it is and educate folks so they can live, work, and play here, no matter what your level is and status in society. All right, Mayor Bailey has a response. I just want to respond with the source of that information. December 2012, Riverside had 129,000 jobs, and the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics shows in November 2015 we have 140,000 jobs. That's 10,000 new jobs in this city. 4,000, if, if you Google Beacon Economics, they'll tell you about the 4,000 jobs last year alone. Quarter four, 2015, we have 531 new businesses in the city of Riverside. 100 open each month. There is business in Riverside. There are jobs in Riverside at every level. We should be proud of that. And, and here's the jobs, folks. I sit there and look at these reports every month, and the fact of the matter is they're home bought in businesses with one or two people and usually the families. They're closing their businesses, reopening with a new business license under a different name. That's the majority of those hundred jobs per month, and that's a matter of fact. Read the reports, I'll send them to you. We get them every month, and that's how it works. People close, people open. We do not have large employers in the city. The city government and the county and the, the hospital here locally, as well as the UCR and CBU and all, those are our employers. We, we educate nurses and, and so forth. They have to leave the city because we have no capacity for any of the CNAs or all nurses. All right, thank you. We'll move on, Councilman Davis. Thank you.